On today's episode of Out of the Groove, Toyota dominates Loudon, Kevin Harvick earns his nickname, and we take a look at who's in the best shape going into Dover. What's up everybody, I'm Eric and this is Out of the Groove. We are now two races into the chase and Kevin Harvick and Martin Truex Jr. are the only two to have moved on so far. And there's no drama this week about penalties as apparently every chase driver, at least so far, has passed all post-race inspections. So that's good. Unfortunately, while the day worked out really well for some people, New Hampshire wasn't as kind to some others. Chris Buescher somehow managed to run below expectations and finished 30th on Sunday. Tony Stewart as well. I think a lot of people thought he would be pretty good this weekend. He was not. Spent most of the day a lap down. He finished 23rd. Austin Dillon had a mess of problems this weekend, but he managed to come around and get at least a 16th place finish, which isn't good, but is as better than what it looked like it would be. And Jamie McMurray seemed to have a pretty good car, but ultimately fell back late and finished 19th, which was very unfortunate for that team. Now, not only did those four that I just mentioned have subpar races, but they're also the four drivers currently on the outside looking in. Both McMurray and Dillon are five points behind 12th place. Tony Stewart is 11 points back, and Chris Buescher is 30 points back. The way it stacks up right now, Chris Buescher, unless he pulls off a win, he's not going to be moving on to the second round of the chase. But nobody really expected him to. Both Austin Dillon and Jay McMurray are only five points out. That's definitely feasible that they could make that up, but they're going to have to have top 10 runs and maybe get a little bit of help as well if they want to make it into the round of 12. Tony Stewart is 11 points back, which is going to be hard to make up, and it's really disappointing because I think a lot of people thought he was coming into the chase this year with a pretty good amount of momentum, but he has had he has not looked strong at all at either uh, Chicagoland or New Hampshire. So 11 points, he's going to need a lot of help. Chances are Tony's going to try and have to win this race. I'd expect some pretty wacky strategies on Sunday. We've seen Tony Stewart win in Dover recently. 2013, he got a win, so it's not impossible. If you go back a few episodes when the, before the chase even started, when people asked me to give my early predictions, I predicted that Jamie McMurray, Austin Dillon, Tony Stewart, and Chris Buescher would be the four drivers drivers out. I personally do not have Jamie McMurray, Austin Dillon, Tony Stewart, or Chris Buescher making it out of round one. So not to brag or anything, but I'm looking pretty good right now. Although to be fair, the first round isn't usually that hard to predict. I mean, I don't think very many people saw Chris Buescher getting out of the round of 16. But I believe of those four, Jamie McMurray has the best chance to try and knock somebody off, possibly his own teammate, out of that top 12. Several drivers other than Truex and Harvick, who, are, who have obviously moved on, are, are looking pretty good as well. Brad Keselowski, Kyle Busch, Matt Kenseth, even Joey Logano, they all are in pretty good shape for sure. They just need to not wreck, basically, or blow an engine at Dover, and they should be clear on into the next round. Denny Hamlin didn't have a great finish at New Hampshire, but he's also doing okay. Same with Jimmy Johnson, even Chase Elliott, Carl Edwards, even Kurt Busch, who's 15 points to the good right now. They're all in okay shape. If they get top 10s, they're in, obviously. If they don't, it's, you know... Just, they got to run. They need to be consistent. Kevin Harvick really dodged a bullet by getting this win on Sunday because, as y'all know, he had some problems at Chicagoland the week before, so he was in a hole coming into this week. I said he just needed to be consistent, have a good top five day, and he'd probably be in decent shape. He went above and beyond and got the win. I'll talk about that right now. The race itself was dominated mostly by Martin Truex Jr. The first half of the race, I'll be honest, was pretty boring. It was basically Truex, Kenseth. Kyle Busch, Jimmy Johnson was basically your top three or four most of the first half of the race. But then after pit stops when Martin Truex Jr. took two tires and everyone else took four, Matt Kenseth is able to take the lead away from him and then he led the next hundred or so laps pretty much on his own. For a while there it looked like the two best cars were Truex and Kenseth and it was going to come down to who was able to control the restarts, who was able to, you know, who was going to be willing to use the bumper at the end there. It looked like it was going to be between the 78 and the 20. And for the most part it was. Martin Truex Jr. already had his win at Chicagoland so he was definitely racing fairly conservatively around Kenseth. Kenseth who was already in decent points position wanted the win. He's won two, he had won two in a row at New Hampshire. That's been like his best track the last couple of years. He obviously had a good car so both of them were racing each other fairly cleanly for a while. Kenseth ultimately held onto the lead throughout the final few restarts. However, on a late restart, Martin Truex Jr. did not get going very well at all on a late race restart. He got put in the middle of a three wide. He fell back and ultimately, and unfortunately, he finished seventh with probably one of the best two cars. But I'm sure he won't worry too much about that. He's into the next round and clearly, he's gonna be one to be reckoned with. The final restart of the day came with about eight laps to go. Matt Kenseth and Kevin Harvick shared the front row. And unlike the last handful of restarts, Kenseth did not get quite as good of a jump as he had. Harvick was able to stay with them and ultimately take the position away with just a few laps to go. He would hold on and win the race. Kenseth finished second, Kyle Busch got a third, Brad Keselowski came back from some troubles early to finish fourth, and Kurt Busch had a quiet day but finished fifth. And as I said before, those five are all pretty good in terms of points right now. It's called the Ryan Newman strategy. All you gotta do is be consistent until Homestead, and then you gotta win. 
the most interesting thing to come out of the end of this race was the conversation about restarts and the way Harvick, Truex, and Kenseth handled them. As is usually the case with New Hampshire, the end of the race saw a fairly rapid succession of cautions. Matt Kenseth, Martin Truex Jr., and Kevin Harvick were basically in the front in all those restarts. They also only had two tires, whereas a lot of the other people behind them had four. But as we saw throughout the day, tires really didn't seem to be didn't seem to make that big of an impact. For the first couple of restarts, Kenseth was able to get away. Truex would, you know, work him for a while there, but ultimately it looked like Kenseth had the better long-run car. However, on the second to last restart, Matt Kenseth and Martin Truex Jr. played a little bit of games with each other. Martin Truex Jr. seemed to mistime it slightly, started to go a little early. When Kenseth saw this, he did not go. He waited until the end of the restart zone to kind of force Truex to hit the brakes. And when Truex hit the brakes, Kenseth took off and he had a great restart and it looked like he was going to cruise on to the victory until another caution came out. During that caution, NASCAR and NBCSN uh, relayed audio of Kevin Harvick complaining about the restart, which, to be fair, I didn't really see why. The field didn't really get jammed up. The only guy that kind of got screwed was Martin Truex Jr., because Martin Truex Jr. kind of screwed up himself. He tried to time the jump early, and ultimately Kenseth saw that and waited until the later part of the zone. Classic restart gamesmanship, right? Kevin Harvick obviously said something about it, and so that was relayed to Matt Kenseth's crew, who were then told that the restarts needed to be cleaner. I'm not just saying this because I'm a Matt Kenseth fan, I'm saying this because of the way the rules are written, eh, the restart was pretty clean. There was nothing illegal about the second to last restart, but as I was listening to Matt Kenseth's radio, they clearly seemed to think there was a problem with it. So in the final restart, Kenseth went at it a little bit more conservatively, tried to restart cleanly, Kevin Harvick was ready for him, he got the jump, and as I said earlier, he took home the victory. Kenseth, after the race, that said the restart was his fault and that you know he talked about getting the message from people saying that the restart wasn't clean and so he went out a little bit more a little bit more conservatively like I said but he said that if he went back and did it again he would probably do what he did before which Harvick seemed to have a problem with now Kevin Harvick as we all know is a very competitive guy he's been around about as long as Kenseth has you know he's got he's had plenty of on track and you know post race altercations with people I mean just this last week he and Martin Truex Jr. ran into each other on the racetrack and didn't get along too well and my point is I just think Kevin Harvick he's one of those guys he likes to he likes to talk other than Kyle Busch, he's probably the most vocal guy on the radio in the entire NASCAR field. And it worked out for him this last weekend. He's moving on to the second round of the chase. So that was kind of my takeaway from the end of the race was the fact that Kevin Harvick didn't like the restart. He, you know, he mentioned it, you know, fair enough. But uh, I think I feel like that ultimately did have some sort of impact on the way the ultimate uh, final restart played out. That being said, Kevin Harvick definitely got a good jump on the restart. He earned it at the end there. It was a good race for him. He clearly had a good car. I wouldn't think his car was as good as Truex or Kenseth throughout most of the day, but... He was able to pounce at the right time. That's why they call him the closer. All right, guys, that is my show. I will be back again on Friday. Thank you all so much for watching. If you haven't already, please follow me on Twitter at Dex Racing. Links are in the description. Please subscribe if you have not already. Uh, i got other videos coming out soon. I keep talking about that NASCAR parody I'm going to do. I'm going to do it, I swear. College work, especially at a school like the University of Texas, is not nearly as easy as high school work. So I am having to get on all of that at once. I barely have time to do this video, to be honest with you. Uh, but I appreciate you guys for watching. It makes it all worth it to me. Uh, tell your friends. If, tell NASCAR fans you know. Tell them about the show. Get some more viewers over here. <laughs> I'd really appreciate that. Thank you all again. I've said it like four times. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all on Friday. Um.